All righty, we're back with a new release. I'm sure that you all know we've got Termination here. Got my little dudes. They're definitely not done. They're missing metallics. They're missing a bunch of random details, and I am trying to figure out right now, before the day before this goes out, if I want to struggle bus to finish off the rest of them. Got my patriarch. Looks all right. Got that earthy. He's crawling out of a calling out of the dirt. out any bright orange ready to massacre people. And massacre Just doing people a zenithal he will. And contrast. I'm trying to do the thing with contrast paints where you like wick away the top level of the paint trying to get a natural gradient, which I think looks okay on some of them, but it does like I took a like kind of unsaturated color to begin with with the military green, so they all just kind of I'm just kind of like a muddy muddy earthy tone right now, which I don't love. Yeah, I was going for a, a Splinter Cell vibe, and I didn't bring them down here. The lighting's not really great here anyways, but um, super dark, and I kind of did some dry brushing of, like, Dawnstone, and then a little bit of dry brushing of the Castellan Green, and then uh, dampening it with some black and brown wash, and then highlighting super bright green and, like, metallics and stuff. Yeah, uh, I think yours like came out pretty nice. Kind of vibe. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. It's it's super simple. It's super minimal. It's kind of just like they're lurking around in the dark. <laughs> lurking around in the dark. Lurking around in the dark. Yeah. And uh, no, trying to Sam Fisher you. Yeah, I mean, the tracker definitely gives me that vibe, and he definitely has the tools to do it, I think. He does. Uh, he's Well, he's got a super unreliable crossbow. 3-5 silent. That's why you have him bust out the shotgun and just let him go hot. Yeah, I ended up building all knives for my warriors so that I can give all knives to everyone. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play them how I want to play commandos or greenskins or whatever. Well, mostly they're different. Um, but the way I've been playing greenskins is like you've got two shooters in the back and everyone pushes up to just like fight. And with like super mm -hmm. conceal and half damage and being able to heal and having four attacks and having rerolls and stuff like that. Um, I think they'll be like, I don't know, mediocre at the way I'm trying to play it, but maybe they'll be okay. Maybe it goes in the square hole. That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing these guys. I don't know when I'm going to get them done or to a point where I'd be happy with them because they're all like super glued to bases so I can snap them off and rebase them, but... I'm just like not feeling the motivation on this current paint job, and now I'm stuck because I I started, so I just gotta I just gotta push through. I think this guy came out the nicest so far, and it's because he's got like a stripe on his shoulder pad to kind Who's of give he him the, some uh, life. That the, was the comms. Little bomber man. No, this is the, the bomber demo man. guy. The little. It's got the little demo pack. Yeah, um, yeah. We're we've got a deep dive on like some tactics and stuff in. The podcast episode that is coming out on Monday, as usual. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have Ace on as the guest, so definitely tune into that as well. Yeah, it's like a 30-minute deep dive per team, I think, going over some of the interesting combos and talking about some of the strengths, rather than just doing straight-up rules review, which you know, you'll know you find on Goonhammer and at Can You Roll a Crit, and I'm sure some other places. We like to talk about the nitty gritty because that's, I think that's where the fun stuff is. Yeah, in the specific situations, kind of digging around looking for combos. Um, yeah, uh, for anyone that thinks it's a weird choice to go with the knife warriors on the Jaegers, you'll have to listen to the podcast to hear my opinion on that. Um, but spoiler alert, it is always to go with a skew, and this is just another skew. Yeah, you're definitely a skew brain person. I mean, it's worked out pretty well. I mean, maybe not the top tables because it's maybe slightly too linear once you get to people who are really, really practiced. But against a lot of people who've never thought about it, Skewless can give you a huge advantage in tournament play. It's cool. It's fun. Um, I think if I played yeah. more, I could do better also. True. It's hard to get the reps in. I mean, you've got your busy DJ stuff. i have running all these freaking tournaments, so I don't get as much time as I would like to play. Yeah, right. I did try the Psychomancer recently, which is kind of fun. Ooh. Uh, no rerolls, no crits is pretty strong. Definitely not as strong as team wide half damage, which is what the Jaeger get. And I think it's probably going to be. I feel like they're going to be one of those things that not stat checks people, but like surprises people very quickly. Like, oh, I'm going to go shoot this dude. I'm like, oh, nothing happened. Yeah. Or like I did two damage. Because they can also do Hardy, which 
is crit down to a normal for retains, which can do a lot of work. It turns all of their crits into normals, which is like is insanely all? strong. Yeah. I'm gonna go find the rulebook now. Um, that's how the that's how the older one for the um, for the Hearthkin was, as well. So it's it's yeah. not like anything super duper new. Um, it's just like copy paste over there. I guess you I just never read it that in depth. I just saw the crit normal, and I just like my brain must have turned on. Yeah, and it, and it does change their retaining. So, like, a, a melty oh. gun against a hardy dwarf will not do mortal wounds. Uh, it says any crit hit rules they've already resolved are unaffected. So, like, P1. So, I think those still work. But it does say change your opponent's retained crits to normal hit. So, it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. So, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so they might... I, I think they'll be a team with some interesting play. They've also got some of the more interesting equipment options as far as, like, loadouts go. I think Mandrakes were decently interesting, just kind of, you know, a little flat. And you got, like, Super Conceal, Chain Snares, and, you know, they're all fine, but they don't really make your operatives play differently. The equipment on the Jaeger can actually turn certain operatives into kind of, like, Swiss Army Knives, because getting a Bolt Shotgun means that now suddenly you have a good mid-range profile rather than just, like, a middling main middling profile. Yeah, because the bolt revolver is four attacks on three, four attacks on threes, or four attacks on fours. Three five is just not that much to write home about. Yeah, the bolt revolver is not a great shooting profile. The shotgun is like is pretty good, um, but just like giving the amount of melee that you give up to improve the shotgun, I feel like is a bigger loss, and you could get it back by just putting knives on your shotguns, but. Yeah. And then, I mean, like, the problem I was having with the Space Marine Scouts, if you take the shotguns, it's really easy for people to just run up on you and fight you, and then you have three attacks on three, or in the Dwarf's mm -hmm. case, it's going to be three on four, and they're just, like, going to die, and then you're going to be sad that you have a shotgun because you can't fight anybody off that's trying to fight you. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're up in the mid-range and you want to get into a knife fight, that's how Ace was doing well with Hearthkin originally, you know? what people will say about ace but knife fights do seem to be the lay of the land when you've got four dice on fours three five you can go toe to toe with a lot of people and with no kin left behind when you go defend the corpse of a fallen kin you can get those free retains basically yeah pretty Ooh. good stuff i guess while we're here i can show off the uh the terrain get a local local guy help us out we will be doing we getting uh, some content shot on these for some shorts talking over the brood brother rules because I happen to have the brood brothers on me the Munitorum crates they look very very nice, very nice. So we're going to be uh, shooting some some videos on these for uh, the YouTube channel so look forward to that in over the coming weeks yeah, they look very good actually they came together very very quickly I think he did this in like a week, not even. Probably a couple days, realistically. Yeah. Yeah, that looks great. Machine. Machine. He's also uh, helping us run the New York Opens Necromunda campaign, just like he did last year. So anyone interested in Necromunda at the New York Open, get a ticket soon when we have them up, even though they're not up right now. Um, do you have any teasers you want to shout out for the Brood Brothers combos? Um, or maybe yeah. like the first impression of like the patriarch or whatever you want to. Yeah, I mean, out. I think I think Brood Brothers have a bit some legs as far as being a competitive team goes. You know, you've got the option of a full thirteen activations. Not that I would expect that you should ever actually do a full thirteen activations because it makes your whole list just kind of wonky. Uh, you get ten selections plus three bonus, and the three bonuses can either be a single patriarch a leader and then one extra and that one extra choice can either be a dork or two familiars these cute little uh familiars they're ga2 they move in pairs they got two defense super conceal five wounds they have an okay melee profile which is kind of interesting and they can move through engagement and under people's legs so these guys are actually probably going to be almost an always take is kind of my expectation it's hard for me to give up the flexibility of two dudes who can actually do mission actions and run around and more importantly spot for your shooters because i think that's going to be one of the big things for this team you can use a friendly model 
as the originating line of sight for a shot. You can't get vantage with it, but you can have a familiar run over to a dude and then just he points and then your guy like points his melting gun and just blows him up through a wall. And that's going to be really, really gross. Yeah, it's kind of like that uh, Hyrotech magnification conduit sort of thing, but it's a tactical ploy that anyone on the team can spot for anyone on the team. So super duper flexible, super nifty. (laughs) It really like fits the crossfire vibes. It gives me a little bit of a reminder of kind of the Star Strider vibes. Like after a model has gone, it's still dangerous because it still can do something. With Star Striders, they're spotting for big laser guns. For this one, they could be spotting for a sniper. They could be spotting for a plasma gun. So it does really force you to pay more attention to where the attacks come from because every operative is still a legal target. So sometimes you do have to trim those activations off before going to cut off the head of the Hydra, so to speak. Yeah, and it is really interesting. The Patriarch is definitely not an auto-take, although he is really good. Um, I am sad to admit, I think my first impression is the the two psychic familiars and one of the leaders is probably going to be a stronger choice, but we all know the Patriarch yeah. is cooler. I think, unfortunately, these guys do provide a lot of benefit. He's very killy. He gives you CP, and he's got a, basically a sniper rifle. Like Not a great sniper rifle, but... Four dice on threes, two, four, silent is pretty respectable, especially because he can double fight or double shoot, which is very powerful on a three APL model with nine wounds. He can also take equipment, which means that he can have a free dash at the beginning of the game, a crack grenade for whatever reason, if you decided to not take your bomber or the ability to retain a free retain, like a upgrade a normal to a crit in defense, which is kind of good. But that upgrade from normal to crit is probably going to be used on this guy, the Magus. He provides a team-wide 5-up invuln and no injury, no APL modifier. Which, from anyone's, you know, dealing of Felgor being the meta monster for a little bit, everyone knows how annoying Warpaint is. This guy gives you Warpaint. For everyone, for free. Something that, you know, at the moment for a single melee team costs 10 equipment points. He does with one selection. And he comes with a big psychic, his big bulbous head. He can uh, launch, you know, somewhere between two to eight mortal wounds worth of damage with a silent, what is effectively a silent weapon. It's a psychic action, but it only requires line of sight. So it is effectively silent. And it just uh, mind wipes someone or he can uh, subtract APL from someone, which is uh, something that many of the best teams have had in the past. Chaos Cults have had it. Pathfinders have had it. So, yeah, the team smacks of a very, very powerful Horde-ish team with a couple modes between Pure Horde and a more Elite-ish Hunter-Killer. Yeah. Um, The rumors about the Patriarch can double, can activate twice is true. He's got four yep. APL, mm-hmm. and when you select him to activate, you choose how many APL you want to generate. Um, it He can't activate three times a turn, so it does have to be twice. So you could go one and three, two and two, or three and one for the APL you generate. Um, you could... He doesn't, like, inherently fight twice, but the fact that he can activate twice means that he could fight in each activation. Um, he doesn't yep. have any shooting attacks, and he can mind control people. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, the mind control is a once a game action that ha- or it's a once a game success but to be fair it it does feel pretty much almost guaranteed against anything outside of space marines i think yeah cause because it's like he takes the their APL, APL. he takes his four apl he adds a d6 to it and then he compares that to your opponent's apl if you're over your opponents you've mind controlled him i think uh does your opponent roll a d6 also your opponent might roll a d6 that's, 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 that's Oh yeah, both players roll 1d6 and add their APL. But, but considering, you know, against a Horde horde team or Gellerpox, I think Gellerpox is probably the big vulnerability here. Or, interestingly enough, you could have a Magus... Oh no, you can't have the Magus do this. Never mind, I'm lying. That would be really crazy, though, if you could Magus someone and then also mind control them. Uh, so yeah, you both roll a d6, but you start it with a plus 4 and they start with a plus 2. So generally you have a plus 2 on the roll, which is... It's going to be pretty hard to beat. What happens if you tie? I don't know. Let's see. A tie. It's got to be higher. Okay. So yeah. ties don't work. It costs you two APL, so that's probably the big minus here. And you've got to be within two inches. So you've got to be pretty close to the enemy lines for you to be mind controlling people. But if you don't actually 
complete the action, like it fails, you could just try, try again. You could even prep yourself in a way where you like run yourself into combat and then you try, it fails, and then you just try again if you charge the turn prior. So you can just have all four of your APL for this mind control ability. And I think probably one of the more scary things is if you hit something like a diabolic grenadier or something else with some gross blast profile, he suddenly turns around, shoots it into your opponent's defensive line. That could be a disaster. Yeah, I think that is like the biggest thing to do with it. Um, or like have a bloat spawn swipe fight all of his boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll definitely make players have to position in different ways. And if you don't, you're going to get caught with your pants down and it's uh, it's going to be bad. And he looks cool. I mean, look at this. Look at this boy. It's on a 50 millimeter base. Yeah, he's huge. He also doesn't fit underneath Octarius terrain. So that's probably going to be a thing that comes up. If people uh, model for advantage, that would be rude. Uh, you know, uh, the big minus maybe for the Brew Brothers is their equipment is kind of, you know, whatever. They've got las guns, <coughs> hotshot capacitor packs. They can overcharge. <laughs> like, cult knives. Like, it's pretty pretty whatever compared to something like the Jaeger that get to, like, t turn their operatives into other things. A lot more of your rules are going to be inside the operatives and inside your ploys. Which I guess is good. You probably don't want a team to be good at everything. Yeah. Um, the other major thing is that the Brood Brothers get access to three archetypes. So they're missing recon. Unless you're in Spanish, in which case they are missing security. But it seems like we'll be playing the English version. And it'll be infiltration, security, and seek and destroy. Yep, and the Jaegers have infiltration and seek and destroy, which are my two favorite archetypes. So mm. more and more they're speaking to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I got to call out, you know, the Jaeger definitely have some of the cooler mini games on their models. You've got the little mine layer who makes your opponent play mind games. You've got Mr. Sam Fisher with the Splinter Cell goggles who can cap people that are have already activated, just uh, finishing them off a little bit more easily. Not really a ton of mini games as far as the Brood Brothers go. You've got more interoperative combos. So you've got the Icon Bearer who can let you do an extra action when you die if you're within six inches of him. That coupled with a medic that's the same three inch medic bubble means that you could have two different strong sides, each being able to output a little bit more firepower, a little bit more um, action economy than your opponent is expecting. Especially when backed up by a Magus that says you're never injured. Yeah, there's there's a lot a lot of combos there. Uh, after you look through the rules, let us know in the comments what some of your favorite combos are. Yeah, you know, tune in on Monday and uh, drop by the Discord or the Patreon if you want to do a little subscribe and let us know what you're thinking about the new rules, Tarnation. See you there. Thanks. Oh, right.